Hello, this is Mr. Gummer with the 4.7, the AAS, HL, and Converse ITT lesson. Today we're going to look at adding our last two triangle congruence principles, right? These are shortcuts to congruence. And we're going to go back and prove the Converse ITT again. Now, I know we've already seen the proof of this, but now because of our last shortcuts to congruence, we will be able to prove Converse ITT much easier. Let's take a look at what AAS and HL actually stand for. Now, you probably have guessed it, that AAS stands for angle-angle side congruence. And HL, though, it stands for hypotenuse leg. It's actually a special case in our shortcut to congruence. Now, the reason why we can actually then prove the these two last triangle congruences is because we have the triangle-angle sum theorem now in place. And because of the triangle-angle sum theorem, we can prove the angle-angle side uh, congruence shortcut very easily. Let's take a look at what angle-angle side actually states. You're going to notice that it actually has a, a special piece of information in here that is really important in the uh, setup of our given. So let's re actually read what this says. If two angles of one triangle equal two angles of another, and a pair of non-included sides which correspond, right, I want to actually point out those two words, which correspond, are equal, then the triangles are congruent. So what this says is, you have two, two, two angles of one triangle equal two angles of another, and we have a pair of equal sides. But these pair of equal sides are non-included, which means there are a pair of sides that are not in between the two angles. And another thing about these two sides is since they are not included, we have to make sure we add a little bit more of vocabulary to our given. Even though they're not included, we still need them to correspond. It can't just be any pair of non-included sides. They have to be a corresponding pair of non-included sides, and then we can call the triangles congruent. Let's take a look at an illustration. So here we are given that we have triangle ABC and triangle RST, such that angle A and angle R are equal, and angle C and angle T are equal, and we're given a corresponding pair of equal sides, BC and ST. Let's prove that these two triangles are actually congruent. And the proof of this is really simple. Back in the last lesson, 4.6, we looked at the triangle angle sum theorem. One of its corollaries was known as the third angles theorem. Well, the third angles theorem actually states is that if two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of another, then the third angles are also have to be equal. In other words, we can immediately declare that angle B and angle S have to be equal. How does that then change our story? Well, notice what we, it changes our story into. We, it changes our story into angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. The side becomes included, which then means we can immediately call these two triangles congruent by the angle, side, angle shortcut principle to congruence. And there it is, angle, angle, side. But we would not have gotten there without our proof of tasty and its corollary, the, tri the third angles theorem. Let's move now into HL, which HL stands for hypotenuse leg. Here's what it says. If two right angles have, sorry, if two right triangles have equal hypotenuses in a pair of equal legs, then those right triangles are congruent. Now you may be thinking, I thought our short magic shortcut was three things, and HL only has two. Well, not really. This is a special case. Notice that there's something already special about our two triangles. We're given two right triangles. So that's one of the of the conditions that go into this, right? It has to be two right triangles. Then you have an equal pair of hypotenuse. There's a second condition. And then you have a pair of equal legs. That is a third condition. So that is our magic number three, one, two, three, right? Right triangles, equal hypotenuse, equal legs. Even though HL only has two letters in the shortcut name, it still has our magic number three. Let's take a look at HL Illustrated. So here's the two triangles we're going to be working with in our proof. Triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Let's prove them to be congruent. Notice that they are both right triangles. Angle C and angle F are given as right. We have BC and EF as our pair of equal legs. And then AB and DE are a pair of hypotenuses. So now how are we going to tackle hypotenuse leg? Here's the trick. We use this trick way back in chapter 3 when we proved the side-side-side congruence. We can take this... Uh, take. Uh, kind of a sample out of our own book, our own recipe we put together there in proving the hypotenuse leg, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a third triangle. That third triangle, we're going to prove that it's congruent to both of the two given triangles, which then means by the transitive congruence, we'll be able to show that the two given triangles will also have to be congruent. So how are we going to build that third triangle? Let's take a look. Let's actually start with our first triangle, ABC. And what we're going to do is on the leg AC, we're going to extend out through point C to a point Z. But we want Z to stop at a certain point. 
We're going to measure the other leg of our second triangle, DEF. We're going to measure the leg DF. And we're going to then measure out to a point Z such that DF and CZ are equal. Now, we're allowed to do that, right? We're allowed to measure and make measure. The next thing we're going to do, or last set of our construction, is actually then connect point B to point Z, thus constructing a third triangle. So I'm going to just give these guys rough names. We'll just call this guy 1, this guy 2, and this guy 3. Here's the goal, and you're going to do this also. On, you're going to do this on your worksheet. We want to prove that triangle 1 and triangle 2 are congruent. But what you're going to do first is prove that triangle 2 is congruent to triangle 3. And you can do that almost immediately. If you take a look, what do you know about those sides? Oh, look, they're equal. What do you know about these sides? Oh, look, they're equal. What do you know about these angles? Oh, look, they're equal. So we can immediately prove triangle 2 and as congruent to triangle 3. What then should follow? Well, our next goal is then to also prove that triangle 1 is congruent to triangle 3. You're going to have to then get a little bit creative with what your given information is. And here's your hint. Angle, angle, side. There's your hint. Angle, angle, side. What can we then conclude about triangle 1, triangle 2? We could immediately then conclude that triangle 1 and triangle 2 have to be congruent by the transitive congruence. You're going to walk through this proof on your assignment. I've given you some hints on your assignment as well on where to, where to start and where to go. Alrighty? So notice then that in the hypotenuse leg that you were given a pair of equal angles, a pair of equal sides, and a pair of equal sides, which means it fits into the angle side side category. But you would protest, but Mr. Gilmore, angle side side doesn't work. And my response would be, my good students, it does work if the A is right. So when the angle is a right angle, yes, this is a special case. It's the good angle side side. All other cases will then fall short because we're not guaranteed congruence out of them. It could possibly be true, but we're not actually guaranteed. But with hypotenuse leg, we have the guarantee. To finish off our lesson, let's talk about the converse of ITT. Now, I know we've already seen this one before, but we're going to revisit and prove it, and it's going to be much easier to do. Recall that the ITT says that if we're given a triangle in which two sides are equal, then the angles opposite those two sides are themselves equal. The same thing, so then the converse ITT, right, we reverse our given a conclusion, and we state it then thus that if a triangle has two equal angles, then the sides opposite those two equal angles are themselves equal. Let's prove this again. We saw it back in chapter 3 by doing an indirect method. This one's going to be a direct method now that we have a new triangle, a shortcut to triangle congruence. So here's our, our last setup, and I'll kind of walk you briefly through what the approach will be and how you're going to structure your proof. So we're given triangle ABC such that the measure of angle A and C are equal. Let's prove that AB is equal to BC. Where do we start? Let's actually start with a similar construction we saw back in chapter 3. We're going to start with an angle bisector. We're allowed to construct angle bisectors, which means let's start by actually taking the third angle in our triangle, not the two that are given as equal, but the third angle, angle B, and bisecting it. When we bisect that angle, we now know we have another pair of equal angles, and that ray, which will then intersect our opposite side AC, we have a new point D. Well, what then can this lead us into? Well, take a look what happens. We are already given a pair of equal angles. We constructed a second pair of equal angles, and BD is actually a segment that is shared by both triangles. So if we notice what the pattern is, that's angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So we can prove that those two triangles are in fact congruent. Triangle ABD and triangle CBD are congruent, which then leads us to say by our, by our best friend CPCTE that AB and BC would have to be equal to each other. QED. There we have our proof of converse IT. Much easier now that we have angle, angle, side. The indirect proof that we saw back in chapter 3 was a bit of a doozy. This one is actually a better approach now to proving that the uh, if two angles in a triangle are equal, that their sides are opposite, uh, the sides opposite them are also equal. We have come to the end of our lesson 4.7. In fact, we've come to the end of our chapter as well. So be on the lookout for a chapter test. If you do have any questions on the 4.7 worksheet, do not hesitate to email me. Be good and do good.